Today, I want to talk about goal setting. You know, we're approaching 2024 here, and a popular thing is New Year's resolutions. And I used to be really into goal setting, but actually, the way I was doing it was wrong, it was making me very unhappy. So, I want to share how I now goal set and why I think it's a more healthy approach to goal setting. So, you know, the most common goal setting approach is you want a certain goal, right? So, like, for example, is I want to own 100 units of real estate. I want to make $25,000 a month in net passive income by the time I'm 35. I want to build a $10 million net worth by this age, right? And that's how a lot of people set goals. If you listen to like a lot of podcasts, that's how I used to set my goal. My goal for the longest time was I wanted $20,000 a month in net positive cash flow by 35, which is like in a year and a half for me. And I want that so I can fat fire and be able to replace two pharmacists incomes through real estate at an early age. And what I realized was that setting goals that way made me actually very, very unhappy and unfulfilled even if I achieved a lot. So let me give you an example. Like by my age right now, you know, 33 and a half, I have about 51 units of real estate. Yeah, I used to have 90 units of real estate, um, but I sold off my mobile home park, which is around 40 units. and now I cash flow about ten thousand uh, dollars positive a month at thirty three and a half, right? And for the longest time, I was n not like really happy with that because I was just like, well, I'm not on my goal at twenty thousand in a year and a half. That's how am I gonna hit that? I'm, I'm more stressed about trying to hit that goal versus not appreciating like what I've done already, right? Like it's a lot of money. Like ten thousand dollars a month net is a lot of money, right? It's enough to replace my w2 income that's that's enough to you know if i relocate to a cheaper cost of living area like not california or a cheaper part of california that's enough to like live a very comfortable life right but i was always focused on like what i was lacking and what i was deficient towards my goal versus like what i've already accomplished right so there's a popular book called the gap and the gain and it talks about that concept is that a lot of us we're, we're focused on the gap that we have so for me I'm not at $20,000 a month, I'm only at $10,000 a month, but I'm not focused on what I gained, and I gained the $10,000 per month in positive cash flow. So, you know, after I realized that and, and, and kind of reflected on that concept, it got me to change my goal setting completely and to be more realistic. So, a lot of people, they focus the goals on the outcome, but what you have to focus your goal on is doing the consistent daily action right the stuff that's boring right so like an example is okay i want a six pack abs okay that's easy and, and cool to say like okay i want six pack abs but what does it really take to get six pack abs you have to go to the gym every day you have to work out every day you have to watch your diet you have to monitor your weight there's gonna be days where you're too lazy to work out you're gonna have to go work out there's days that you want to eat that cake but you gotta trim your body fat so you don't eat the cake there's times when you're traveling and it's hard to maintain a healthy diet. So you have to go out of your way to figure out like, okay, what's a healthy meal, right? Like your action should be focused on that, right? So if, for example, if your goal is to get a six pack abs, then your, your goal, your resolution should be, I want to go to the gym five times a week. You don't say how hard, how intense, just go to the gym five times a week. And then you can say six out of, Seven days, I want to eat healthy. Now, one day where I'll, I'll have a cheat day or a cheat meal or, or, or splurge a little bit, right? So you have to make the goal really about the daily consistent boring action, the daily consistent boring grind, right? So like for me, my goal was I want 100 units of real estate, which I almost hit, right? But, you know, I had 90 units of real estate, but... My mobile home park, as I talked about, wasn't making me money, right? It was actually losing me money, but my I'll add a unit goal, right? And what my goal should have been was, well, I want to consistently send out mailers on a monthly basis. I want to consistently make offers. I want to consistently analyze deals. And eventually, if you commit to those actions, the goal will come, right? If I'm consistently sending direct mail, if I'm consistently making offers, if I'm consistently underwriting deals and putting myself out there, I will eventually hit my goal of 100 units. It, it may take longer, it may be faster, but if I focus on that action, that is how you guarantee your success 
while not making yourself unhappy, right? So for me, my cash flow goal is twenty thousand dollars a month. Still, I'm, I'm removing the age limit of thirty five. I may get there sooner. I may take longer, right? But I know if I, um, you know, continue to build up my personal brand on YouTube, if I continue to uh, buy real estate over time, I will get there, right? So just make the action um, the goal, and knowing that the the goal is the action, you have to make the action sustainable and realistic over a long period of time, right? Like when I, like, can I make, like for me, I know when I buy real estate, like you assume you have no partners, I have to buy a apartment complex maybe every two to three years, right? Like that's realistic for me. Like that's very, very realistic for me. Now, if I wanted to buy like three apartment complexes a year, it could be realistic, but I would have to probably leave my W-2 job and then maybe bring on some partners, right? So that's not realistic, not sustainable. So, but at my current pace, at my current level, a new apartment complex every two, three years is probably the pace I'm gonna be able to go at. And I can do that for the rest of my life, right? And let's talk about the gym, for example. Like, I used to power lift. I used to, you know, deadlift, squat, bench. Yeah, you can do that in your 20s, but can I do that in my 50s and 60s? Maybe not. Maybe I'll have some, like, you know, joint pain, some aches, some whatnot. So it's not sustainable. So now I, I try to exercise in a way that I can sustain for the rest of my life, right? Like, what can you do for the longest period of time? Because the longer you do something, it'll guarantee your success. The longer you invest in real estate and make offers and do direct mail and analyze deals, you will get deals, right? You'll hit your goal more. If you focus on like going to the gym like five times a week, you'll, you'll hit your goal, right? So it, it's really changing that goal to the daily boring actions and not necessarily the outcome, right? So that was a huge, huge pivot for me. So now I don't even set goals of like how many units I wanna own. I don't set goals on a certain cash flow like immediately. I mean, I know what I want, but I'm not gonna kill myself or beat myself up if I don't get it, right? So like, let's say I'm, I'm striving for 20,000, I'm only at 15,000 a month in net cash flow. So what, let, let's just celebrate the fact that I, I have 15,000 and I know I'll eventually get there, right? Like it, it, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? So for me, I shifted that mindset. So now um, for goal setting, another thing that I do is I used to, you know, in, in, in I know the mentorship guru world what's really big like oh what's your 10 year goal what's your five year goal and i used to think that way too but now now that i've built some success now that i've accomplished some of the goals i set out i'm just like huh like it's cool to say like oh i want a billion dollars of asset assets under management and that person literally hasn't syndicated one deal yet i'm like how about you syndicate one deal first see how you like it see if you're even successful at it and then at that point, you can slowly scale there, right? Like, I get it's cool to de declare these big audacious goals, right? By all means, if it motivates you, do it. But for my, what I've seen, the people who declare the biggest goals, they usually will flame out and lose interest when they realize that it's a lot more work, it's a lot harder, and it's not as sexy as it seems, right? That's what I mean by like, I have a more realistic approach, right? So like, it's hard for me to make a big goal because maybe my situation may change in five to ten years or I may change as a person in five to ten years and I definitely will because I'm constantly growing and constantly developing and maybe that's not gonna be my goal anymore right like maybe like for example I could say like oh my goal is to own a thousand units of real estate in ten years and you know my current rate it probably is obtainable right like you know, if I just keep on doing cash out refinances, pull out money and buy more apartment complex, it's definitely like attainable. But maybe in 10 years, my situation will change, right? Maybe I would be huge on YouTube and, and doing well on YouTube. Maybe I will, you know, have a kids and a family and maybe my motivations will change, right? Like maybe I want to focus more on family and personal life, right? So it, it's really hard to set these big goals and it's not realistic because I know that I'm going to change. Like, Look at me, just the past like two years, I've changed so much, right? Like I bought a bunch of real estate. After buying a bunch of real estate, I made all these reflections, these self-realizations. I was like, you know what? I don't need to go as fast. I proved myself, I'm okay, right? So for me, I set really six month goals and they're more action oriented, right? So right now I'm not in the phase of buying real estate, but if I was, I would say, all right, 
for the next six months, I want to send 300 letters a month and analyze a lot of deals and make offers. That makes sense for me. Do that for six months. Six months goes by, I don't have a deal. Next six month goals. Okay, I want to continue doing 300 letters a month, submitting offers, analyzing deals, right? Now, that'll be my goal until eventually I get a deal. And once I have a deal, it's like, all right, I have this one good deal. Next six months, I want to start to renovate these units and you know stabilize the asset and reevaluate in the next six months. So for me, it's more short, realistic, obtainable goals. So it helps keep you present, but forward facing. Because if the goal is too big, too far, it's gonna make you very like sad, very depressed, right? Like you just want something bite-sized and realistic. So to kind of summarize this video, how I set goals now is I just make it about six month goals and I focus the goal on the daily actions that is needed to be successful. So like for example, if you want six pack abs, go to the gym five times a week and eat clean six days a week. That should be your goal, right? You know, or if you want to get your first apartment complex, your goal should be I want to you know, save up money first to, to get you know enough money to buy an apartment complex, send out direct mail for six months, analyze all the deals that reach out to you, make offers on all the deals that reach out to you, and then you do that for six months, and then at that point you can reevaluate your pivot. Like, okay, did it work? Should I continue it? Should I not? Right? So that, that that's the more realistic way that I set goals, and I feel like that helps me keep me more present, makes me less anxious, and helps me focus while still focusing on the future. So hopefully you found value from this video and hopefully this changes the way that you make goals. And hopefully if you have any questions or comments down below, please drop it down. I'd love to answer the questions using videos. Until then, see you next time.